Usually it's within our own subnet. All of our uh, operations can be accessed by the cloud. And once again, we can see a before and after shot of a typical distribution center um, where we've been able to reduce the amount of lines that uh, uh, were required after the document automation was installed. Original pack orders are orders that are shipped in their original packaging and they require uh, documents to go on the outside of the box. Now these uh, um, are most commonly referred to as packing slip pouches or packing slip wallets. Um, sometimes we also put extra collateral uh, uh, pre-printed literature into these packing slip documents. I'd like to show you a video now. And in the video, you're seeing a laser printer uh, print the different orders, separate the orders into um, their own segments, fold the orders, and uh, put them into a packing slip pouch. Uh, later on in the video, what you'll see is the uh, orders being uh, dropped into a tote, and these uh, uh, totes will then be transferred over to a packing station, and the uh, packing slips will be placed onto the outside of the box. Repack orders are orders that are uh, picked and packed into a, 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 a outer size carton. They're orders that are usually, once again, they require a document and the document is most commonly referred to as a packing slip and that's placed into a pouch and sometimes we have other um, pre-printed materials also placed into that pouch. I'd like to show you a video of a uh, original pack or uh, repack order right now. In this video, you'll see a, uh, a pouch that is being applied to the side of the carton. The carton is empty, and the carton is uh, then going to be distributed over to the picking stations. After, the, after it's gone to the picking stations, the uh, uh, box will be um, go to an operator will place void fill into the carton, and then that uh, carton will uh, uh, then be sealed and shipped. Uh, you can't see in this video the um, uh, label because there is no label on this box. The packing slip itself is being used as the shipping document too. Okay, this was a time study done by a major book distributor and uh, they uh, uh, did this time study which showed that the uh, paper folding and stuffing into the packing slip pouch or packing slip wallet uh, took about 30 seconds. Okay, repack orders uh, once again are uh, picked and packed into a carton and uh, sometimes we uh, will place the documents inside the box instead of on the outside of the box. I'd like to show you a video now of a um, of a uh, uh, distribution center where the uh, documents are being uh, printed and fed right into the box and in this video as well the you'll see the uh, shipping label is being applied right to the outer side of the box. Sometimes we require pre-printed documents to be placed into the box or into the order as well. Um, th this poses a challenge to a lot of companies because these uh, uh, pre-printed materials such as catalogs, literature sets, uh, brochures, cards, etc. Uh, take up a lot of room and it's very, very difficult. Sometimes uh, they can be printed in different languages and the um, Languages might not be uh, uh, readable for the uh, operator to manually place in, and a lot of times they get these incorrect. I'd like to show you a video now of uh, pre-printed materials going into an open container. As you'll see here in this video, what we're doing is uh, marching the box along to different stop points where uh, different orders will 
have the document being inserted into the different orders and all being done correctly. As you can see, some of these uh, uh, boxes are moving at a very, very fast spaced, very, very fast speed, and um, uh, everything is 100% correct. A few slides ago, we discussed that Walmart.com and different fulfillment centers have very, very high speed um, distribution centers. And these high speed in, uh, distribution centers require integrated systems uh, where the, the product and document are actually um, uh, married at the uh, packing station and uh, this is completely automated. Uh, sometimes we use rigid containers, sometimes we use flexible containers. I'd like to show you a video right now of a uh, flexible package uh, automated system. As you can see, the tilt tray sorter in the background is distributing the product onto a staging conveyor. The staging conveyor will then um, um, bring the product forward to an operator while they will manually manipulate the product so it's oriented to achieve the uh, best package result, usually uh, the shortest uh, length for the package uh, itself. The product is then scanned and the correct preprinted and correct print-on-demand document will be uh, inserted into the uh, bottom conveyor belt and then the uh, uh, top conveyor belt and bottom conveyor belt will merge the order together. You'll see that if we don't like everything that we see, there's a reject. Uh, once the package is uh, complete, we'll put a shipping label on there and it will go off to a shipping sorter. Document automation. It holds the key to achieve the perfect order scenario. Thank you very much for your time. And thank you, Tom. And before we let you go, we do have some questions from our attendees. The first one asks, how long has the perfect order concept been around? That's a good question, Jim. The perfect order concept uh, methodology has uh, been around for quite some time, uh, before 2005, I think. Um, it's an offshoot of the Six Sigma process, but it looks at things in a different way. All right, our next one would like to know how and when did PSI Engineering get into document automation? Well, PSI Engineering has been around for uh, 20 years now, and um, we've been in business since 2009. We started to uh, manufacture document automation about 12 years ago. Uh, we've got a question that asks, are there other benefits adopting the perfect order methodology? Yes, Jim, there are. Uh, the first thing that our customers tell us is that their uh, peak throughput is achievable within the daily working hours. Other benefits include uh, uh, super operators can be freed up for, from the pecking station to, to other areas within the uh, distribution center. Um, we also see that there's uh, many other efficiencies and of course the uh, beehive effect uh, is uh, greatly reduced over a much longer time. Tom, one of our attendees would like to know what sort of return on investment he can expect. Well, Jim, most of our customers achieve a return on investment in less than one year. One of our customers, after working out all their numbers, realized the ROI is approximately three months. Uh, one application uh, is uh, uh, scoped out. Uh, there, uh, we, we can show our customers uh, that their uh, current costs of the document process are. Uh, then we show them uh, what their payback will be. Uh, we have plenty of software tools and time study information that can help with these calculations. All right, let's move on to our next one. It says, when does a distribution center manager have to make the decision to stay with manual versus implement automation for the perfect order methodology and document automation? That's a difficult question. It really comes down to a variety of pain factors. Uh, the first priority of business, a DC manager, is to increase efficiencies. Uh, we show them 
that there's many different ways to improve throughput and we will guarantee that we'll always put the correct document into the correct order every single time. Okay, here's our next one. What if my distribution center is already completely filled? There's always room for doing the right thing the first time every time. PSI Engineering has developed increasing custom solutions, uh, some of which document automation installed above conveyors and uh, we can always maximize the floor space. Also, if you notice that the, um, in some of the slides, uh, we actually reduce the amount of uh, conveyor space, so thus reducing the amount of floor space that's required. Hi, one of our attendees writes, my distribution center isn't always really busy all year. What can you do for us? Okay, what we do is we like to design our systems for the peak uh, volume and generally that volume happens between Thanksgiving and Christmas where e-com and personalized gifting become very popular. We like to call these the hallmark moments. Uh, when automation is implemented for the perfect order, these other peak times will easily handle all the other order volume and of course uh, everything will be on time and defect free regarding your uh, documentation. Okay Tom, we've got a two-parter here. When did PSI Engineering start developing its part of this methodology, and where are you now? Actually, Jim, uh, we engineered the concept of the uh, perfect or the correct marriage of the document right uh, very early on, and uh, this became part of our triple check system. And uh, there could be sequencing issues, uh, you know, if we didn't do this. So uh, fortunately, our philosophy and the correct document into the correct order at the correct time fitted right into the perfect order concept. Well, Tom, with that, we need to wind things up. I want to thank you very much for sharing your time and expertise with us here today. Thank you, Jim. I'd like to thank uh, Global Spec for this opportunity for PSI Engineering to present our uh, perfect order documentation uh, uh, presentation. Well, Tom, you are certainly welcome.